Okay, so we we'll go ahead and continue from here. We will be viewing the broadsheet from the teachers' uh, our platform, from the lecturers' platform, once we go ahead with that. So the timetable just gives us a description of the entire timetable of the school. But once the timetable is filled in by adding up timetable items, the school authority can easily put in the subject and the class and the date it's supposed to come upon. This timetable can be used for exams. It will be able to moderate the exams and students can view it based on their levels. It's not confusing as the only the timetable for a particular level is shown to the students of that level. Uh, the students will see the entire school timetable article, allowing them to easily pick up their subjects from the timetable. From this particular platform, we're able to just view the result of the students and how they've done, how far they've gone. We're able to take a glance at it. This is the way the reports will be described. As you can see, for this particular child, the child has some scores in PHS 101, uh, in TS 101, core strengths. Uh, every one of these things will come together to describe the scores, the strength of this particular student uh, in this particular platform. So this is a result board that will come along with the software allowing the students to be able to see their entire performance or the school authority to see the entire performance of the student. Uh, the compressed images just allows us to compress images that are within the system. As you can see, once clicked, it, uh, it compresses images, making the system further more efficient. In a situation whereby the school authority feel they just uh, don't want to increase their bandwidth, they want to get more out of the system uh, before taking information and setting that information back into uh, the base. So that allows us to do that particular thing. All right, so now we have the send mail. Now the send mail structure, immediately after bulk registration has been used, allows the school authority to send the username and password of every student right to the email that is in that particular file which was downloaded. So once it's once uploaded like that, the email of every student is put and then instantly the school authority just clicks on in, in this particular place. All they have to do is click on all students and uh, send passwords to set to yes. Once that is done, the school just submits and then an email is sent to every student, allowing them to know the username and password with which they can access the system. The students have the ability to change their password, so the student authority can choose a particular password, maybe the name of the school, maybe a famous icon, and use it as the main starting password. Every student can log in and then change their password, increasing the security in such a scenario. All right, so we go ahead with the exam controller. Now, the exam controller allows the school authority to control exams. Uh, once clicked on, it allows the school authority to determine but what is going to be happening within an examination. Uh, uh, first of all, it allows you to control what people see in case you are not ready for exams. Uh, once you look at the text style here in this text style field, the information field is what people see if the school is not ready for exams. Once it's set to text style in this particular decider, but if it is set to input, uh, it means that a password will be required. That password is put into this place, and once submitted, any student that has access to that password will be able to take the exams. Now, in a scenario whereby the students pass the password to one another, the students will still not be able to uh, uh, access it as long as those students have been specially approved by the school to do the exams. So even passing around with the password does not guarantee that anyone can enter the exam if that person has not been specially approved by the school authority for that special examination. Also, once the exam is open, it will require the texter, but once it is closed, then uh, they, they will just see the texter right there. But if the exam is declared open, both the texter and password will not appear. When students click, they can go directly into exams to just do it. It means it's a general exam and everybody can have access to that particular exam. All right, so that is what we are looking at and that is how we are going to go about running the things. So it's gonna be brilliant and beautiful like that, allowing the school to control the system without much ado. All right, so now we're moving straight up into the admin password. This, this just allows the school to change the password as they like, as you can see, we have used ABCD. The school authority can change it into any complex structure, uh, making the system more secure. The subject registration password allows the school authority to control uh, the ability of students to register courses, as we know that registration will want to be stopped at a particular uh, time uh, during the semester. So once uh, this password has been put and ch or changed, no student will be able to access the exam, the, uh, the uh, registration of courses anymore uh, from that particular time. So we can add a level from here, uh, whether it's uh, HND1, HND2, HND3, and be added and submitted from here. We can add courses here, just click on the name of the course you want, and then uh, the BMAS structure will be, will, be, will be infused into this software, allowing uh, anything to be done straight at a go. All right, so now from here we are looking at uh, uh, the list of, of students. So we've seen all these, we've seen the assessment and we've seen the function of each and every one of these buttons. Okay, so we'll be going back home and we go log in as a lecturer. 
and then we'll see what we do from there. Okay, so the color of this display changes constantly, keeping the system continuously fresh, allowing access uh, uh, wonderfully uh, to every one of these things. So now we go in, we've seen the admin dashboard, let's go and see the lecturer dashboard. Now, once the lecturer logs in, the lecturer is able to access a list of functions that allows them to do their job. As you can see, first of all, we have a dashboard here that displays the population of students in each of the courses that is given to the lecturer. This lecturer has been given Math 101, PHS 101, and MTS 311 to teach, and the population of each of the students in each of these courses is displayed on this particular platform. Uh, in this second particular part, we are looking at uh, um, the structure here, which gives us uh, a pie chart. Uh, also, allowing it possible for the lecturer to compare, he could remove mathematics and compare just uh, physics and MTS, and he could restore mathematics and compare PHS and uh, PHS and 101 and Math 101, removing MTS 311 from that. So it's interactive, allows the lecturer to do their job, and this and many more things uh, makes it wonderful. Now, the lecturer could log out, he could add a subject uh, if permitted by the school authorities, and they can also set, edit, or mark examinations. Uh, depending on what is required in that particular scenario. Lecturer can teach a class, then change their passwords. They can view their own broadsheet, which we'll be clicking on now. The broadsheet allows lecturers to actually see the levels they have been given. So if a lecturer is given 100, 200, he sees that. And when he clicks on view subjects, uh, he's able to see the broadsheet for 100 level. As you can see here, this is a broadsheet giving us a basic description of 100 level. The majority of the students here are not offering many of the courses uh, for those students in 100 level, but you can still see more detail by clicking on the button at the top here, giving us more detail into the mathematics. As we can see, Ionova has done a particular course. So you can see that's why we see eight here in this particular exam. Uh, for the tests, nothing has been done. Uh, so for the school authority, once they can do that, this, 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 this is instantly downloadable or printable, allowing the lecturer to have access to print his result sheet and based on the notice board right from the software for any of the courses that is taken. So this is for Math 101. So the lecturer would have access to this beautiful result board for any course that is being taken uh, in detail of how the students are performed. All right, so that gives us the broadsheet view for the lecturer. Now we can now look into the teaching of classes and of course the setting of exams and the marking of exams and the editing of exams as the case may be. So let's, let's click on that. Now, when you click on set, edit, and mark exam, the lecturer is able to create exams for any of the courses in question. He's able to create an exam for MT, uh, Math 101. In this case, the same subject set. As you can see, many assessments have been created. Now, if the assessment is a manual assessment, as you can see here, the lecturer has access to mark uh, the, the, this assessment. Once he clicks on mark, as I have clicked here, the, the lecturer has, has access to mark the assessment. As you can see, the scripts of every one of the students pops up if they have done the exams, and since they have not done anything, that is why we cannot see any scripts here for that particular course. So if they are taking an exam, their script pops up here, and the lecturer is able to instantly mark that particular uh, uh, assessment. So let's click on the second one. Okay, so we can see this one as an assessment. The lecturer can mark this. So for this particular student, for that particular assessment, all the questions pop up. If it's a manual assessment, a manual exam that is given, and the lecturer can mark from here. This particular this is not for the teaching this is for assessments major assessments and major exam we still have our, our cbt structure which is beautifully set for the teaching so you can see automatic marker on gap filling and multiple choice telling us that is marked by the system but this is the manual which we can see manual in the exam names and that tells us that is uh, the systems allows the lecturer to mark those particular one by clicking on this math 101 set exam for this subject the lecturer is able to open up a new view as you can see where he sets the start time the stop time the duration is seconds of the exam the type of exam multiple choice gap filling essay math the manual let me reinforce again that the essay is going to be marked by an artificial intelligence that compares the script of the lecturer to student although manual can be selected in a situation whereby a question is set and the lecturer wants to mark by themselves so that's set of manual we have uh, also the session uh, it will be set whether it's the first semester or second semester and uh, the year of the sessions appropriately once that is set the lecturer can begin to fix in questions into the exams um in, in case we do that just to make a sample here if we select a, a particular uh start time uh for an assessment let's click on 30th and then we create a valid period on the second as today is the first of october uh, uh let's put 1000 seconds as the duration of that examination and then we can put a type of assessment as a uh, um, um, essay or multiple choice, as the case may be. Let's make it essay. Um, then we look at uh, 2021, uh, as we see. 
2020 as our sessions and we can pick first semester once this is submitted the system will create an assessment and begin to open up spaces now you can see here it takes us straight to a place where the lecturer can easily continue to do his work you can see since i've created an assessment for uh essay i can see my platform here that allows me to fill in questions i just fill in my question i put in my marking guide and the maximum score and i submit and it gives me another page and i can continue creating as many questions as i like now once i've created that the system will check the marking guide and mark for the student what the student has done so i guess we just go back from there since we created our assessment we then go back to the assessment uh structure where we pick the subject to create that particular assessment so also the lecturer can edit an existing assessment uh, let's see if we have an assessment on phs 101 okay we have assessment so we can edit this assessment straightforward if students have done it if they have not done it we won't be able to so now this you can see we can edit this it says what logo is this i can edit this question from this assessment looking you can see the picture that was uploaded by the lecturer the question is what logo is this uh, that's the logo of the Nova tech nigeria and then uh, we can see this is the logo that's the answer the lecturer can edit this exam for the students and once edited it edits it in the scripts of all the students instantaneously. Uh, that's that about that. So that structures this for us. Uh, okay. So we can see the questions here are editable. Uh, we can do that and even more with this particular system. So lecturers can set exams, they can edit exams, they can mark exams as they like from this particular structure. Now, we're now going to go to the interesting part, which is teaching class. Now, on this software, classes can be taught in live video uh, with the Zoom interactive uh, software attached to this. But also, they can be taught with uh, the video class, which is an uploading of recorded classes, if you let try. And the brilliant one, which we love to present right now, before going for the others, is the chat class. Now, as you can see at the top of the screen here, coding can also be taught from this platform, meaning Python, HTML, JavaScript can be taught from this particular platform, the lecturer, once he clicks on teach a code class, will be able to have access, as you can see, to this to, to a script where the students have typed. You can see this lecturer has access to the 100 level student scripts, to the 300 level student scripts. And once he clicks on anyone, he's able to enter into that particular student script. You can see into the site where the teaching will be done instantly. All right. So now the, the access is denied because we've not set up the, the teaching site. It's a beautiful one. And once the teaching is done, the lecturer can go back and still enter into every single student script and make sure that they do the job very well. All right, so now we go into the chat class. Now, in order to enjoy this chat class well, as you can see, we've already done some work. Uh, some students have done some beautiful work here, and the lecturer has marked some and has not marked some. Uh, you can see here we have three students in the class. The system displays the amount of students that are logged in for this class. It also allows the lecturer to set questions, mark questions, teach the class, using a variety of formats. As you can see up here, we can see the lecturer can chat, they can score the student from this particular uh, downward thumb, giving the thumbs down. Um, uh, it also pops up on the student's phone. They can also uh, send a picture by clicking on this camera. They can upload a file by clicking on this file view. They can upload audio by clicking on this here piece, uh, go back to home, and also set essay questions, objective gap questions, manual questions, and manual image questions, as the case may be. Now, we'll be explaining the meaning of all this in the GP, all right? But before we go ahead, I'd like us to go into the student platform and log in as a student. And once we have logged in as a student, we'll be able to see how students and lecturers can interact by looking at what they see, what the student is seeing, and what the lecturer is seeing. Now, I know you're looking at this and wondering why it's divided into two. We know that chat classes can be, can be a little bit frustrating. So in this software, we have divided the chat classes into two uh, platforms, allowing the, the, the lecturer to actually teach from this particular place you can see teach on the on the left side we have classworks popping up on the right side we have random uh, chats which includes audio teachings video document download as you can see from here uh, this is a picture uploaded by the lecturer uh, this is also a picture uploaded by the student this is a document the student uploaded to be downloaded this is a document the lecturer uploaded to be downloaded also you can see this audio recording by the lecturer whereas on this particular side the classwork of the students pops up now the lecturer can actually view the score of students as you can see here on this platform when you click on view scores and comments the lecturer is able to see the classwork history of that student and this student has done two classworks in this particular uh, place so far and the score in that particular one is uh, 7.65 over 20 as he did not do so well all right so that's that about that so now if you go ahead and look into it you would also see uh, the ability of the lecturer to actually um, work on the manual. This manual was marked by the lecturer. 
and the lecturer can actually, in case of creating a question, the lecturer can actually mark, you know, or lock a classwork, preventing access from students who have wasted time and actually doing the classwork. So once the lecturer clicks on lock, we're going to do that in a second and make everything just pop up just nice. Aha, uh -huh. so this, you can see the blue names here, allowing you to click when the lecturer clicks in, as I said, is able to see the classwork history of the student, all the work done so far by that particular student is seen by the lecturer. You can see the student has not done some of the work that's expected here. And the student, uh, basically, this student has not uh, done anyone. He has done this, and you can see mark this assessment. The lecturer can mark because it was a manual assessment that was given. Uh, once the lecturer clicks on mark this assessment, the lecturer is able to mark, as you can see here. The question is, what's a monkey? And the student said, I'm a boreal animal. I can make a comment and then mark, but I don't want to do that yet. I want, um, I want us to be able to uh, access uh, the classes before we go ahead and mark any assessment from the classwork history. Meaning the lecturer can actually go and mark in a situation whereby um, the assessment has been done for a long period of time and the students just want to see how they performed in that particular assessment. So uh, we're going to open a new browser now. On opening the second browser, I'm going to share my screen into that browser. We're opening the second browser to allow us to have access uh, to, to uh, the student. So I'm going to go in to Web Polytechnic now and um, I'm going to log in as a student uh, in Web Polytechnic. Yes, we're here in Web Polytechnic platform. I'm going to log in as a student so that we see how things are happening. Uh, but as, as the lecturer's end affects the student end as we go ahead and as uh, the system is used. As you can see, this student is logged in fresh. He hasn't done any assessment and therefore has no scores. And that is why the pie chart is not showing up. Other than that, if, if the student has done any subject or any exams, any tests, it shows up on these boards and the pie chart also displays itself to show us, give us access to what the student has actually done. So you can see a little welcome information for the student. The students can actually take exams by clicking on this platform. It gives the students access to go into any of their subject. This student has only registered one subject, which is Math 101, and the students can take exams. You can see this student has not taken any exams, and so many exams have been set already in this particular uh, assessment. The students will go ahead and take exams in a minute, but since we have left the lecturer hanging, we want to go to attend the class. As you can see, students can actually pay online. They can access an e-library, and the lecturers also have the same access to actually fill in uh, information into that e-library and then once they fill in that information they are able to go ahead and uh, do something nice with that particular information so that's it is that about that so we we'll go ahead and attend the class and we'll see the dynamics of how lecturers and students can interact on our classes of course you're already aware of how they would act on uh, a video class but now we'll be looking at uh, a chat class uh, we know recorded video is just for viewing but here in this chat class as you can see the student has access also to everything the lecturer has access to but these students cannot see the scores of other students if you look at it you see that the name of multiple students does not pop up in this student's platform as opposed to the lecturer's platform so meaning that the students can see their own scores and their own classworks as you can see take classwork here because the lecturer just said the classwork but the students cannot have access to see what is done by all the uh, students, as you can see. So, lecturer said this classwork. If I click on take classwork, the system instantaneously, you can see, I can see other students logged in with me. I have two questions to take here. I have not done anyone. So, my score is reading zero, um, zero on the other side. So, all I have to do is click on take classwork. It's asking me what's a computer. I can say a computer is a machine. And I just stop there, full stop, and then I can submit this. This is a either a manual or theory. As the case may be, I will know in a minute. Okay, so it's a it, it's a manual one since the system has not recorded the score. Uh, it's gonna wait for uh, me once I've done that. Uh, I can go ahead and then you know view it. So we'll go that, do that. So let me take the second one. Um, the second one says, "What's a software?" I can say, "A software. A software is uh, is an org an organism that." lives in the digital world let's do that that lives in the digital world uh this is just like um like um, um web polytechnic which is software living in the digital world so i can do that i can submit as a student i've done the two class works i can go back to my class and i'll have access to instantly see what is obtainable okay so i've taken that particular class work and it's gone. It's a manual classwork, as you can see here. It says the manual classwork has been submitted, but the teacher is yet to mark it. Now, once the teacher marks that, I'll be able to view what I have scored. Now, this one 
I have done MMAT 311 and I can have access to view it. As you can see, two questions. What is a wave? I said a wave is a graph. Uh, uh, so the system marked that for me. And it's, uh, so uh, the lecturer has marked it. Uh, he, so he didn't comment, he just marked it. I said, this is a course. And he gave me, uh, okay, this must be marked by the AI, sorry. And the AI marked this one. Uh, so it's not the lecturer. It's auto marked, as you can see. So in the AI, when I say what is physics, it gives me three here over 10, because I said physics is a course. It's a terrible definition. Uh, over 10, I said, what is a wave? And it says uh, a wave is a graph. And it gives me a small score of what a wave is. And that's that about that. So that helps me structure my work and um, I'm able to do more into that particular regard. So the students can actually take that, do it at a go and present it straight to themselves. So as a student, I can take a class one, as you saw before. I want to take just post manual, and then you can see that there. Let's see if uh, I can take this second class work here as a student. We are already covering class work round. So this one is just uh, one question. So let me just take this particular question. It says two plus two, <laughs> we can put in four. Uh, sample of a question set. And once that has been done, yeah, it leaves there. We can go back to class. I guess it's also a manual uh, classwork set. So you can see, yes, your manual class has submitted. The lecturer is yet to mark it. All right, so we're taking that. Now, as you can see, when the lecturer sets question, they can instantly the students instantly see that question right in the class. This is a class login. They see the students logged in with them. They can take class works, they can submit. The lecturer, on the other hand, you can view it. Uh, I'm going to go back to the screen of the lecturer now. Let's go back there. Are you getting me? Okay, you can see now back there we can reload uh, or go back to the class and we should see that Ionova has done uh, some classwork. So let's look at that. All right, so uh, you can see there. So Ionova, let's see. View scores and comments. Green Jayola. Okay, so Ionova there, as you can see in this. I know has not done a classwork, has not done a classwork. Yes, it is all classworks are skipped. All right. So that's it was that about that. So the lecturer can view the scores of students who have done their classwork and can also view uh, to see that some students have not actually done their classwork. All right. So that's beautiful about that. Um, I would like to clear this particular uh, view and then uh, set fresh classworks for the students to do. As you can see, the system is reading that we have not done all the classworks we are supposed to do. So I guess we can just go ahead and uh, to the student platform and let's see if we can just uh, uh, apply uh, uh, scores to all those things and take all the classwork. So here, yeah, let's take this classwork. Um, let's just one question. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a gap question. As you can see, once the lecturer sets it, this is how the students see it right in the class. Same thing, let's take this question and said, mention three habitats. I can say terrestrial terrestrial habitats. Uh, the system will check, even if more than the number of habitats required are given, the system will actually check all true, and the system will be able to tell the difference between one and the other. So terrestrial, aquatic, and then we have the arboreal habitats, as the case may be. Sorry for my spelling of arboreal. Our lecturers will have better more academic at this place. So you submit, I want to say submit, you can see instantly, uh, yeah, I was given zero. Wow, that's terrible. Over nine, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so I must have been wrong or something. Maybe it meant something else. Yes, but uh, I missed that particular one. So as a student now, I can just go back to the class and they see that I have done uh, that particular uh, class work on October 1. Okay, so I can view my scores and, uh, you know, just do that. So let's take, the other class works as we can see okay so uh i've not done anyone here i can go ahead what is physics uh, physics physics is an exam i don't know what answer the lecturer is going there but uh, student this is remember, remember what we are doing this that this is instantaneously inside the class uh the students able to do this because one class work has done i can take a second one um, and say, um, uh, what is math? Math is a course. Is a course. Now that's just primitive, uh, yes, uh, you know, definitions. Once you say home one is done, it goes. And I can take the third one. And then uh, what is programming? I can say programming uh, is a trade, as the case may be. So it's up to me, make my choices and submit. I've done all that. I can go back to the class. And the lecturer should see 
that I have done. Okay, I just have one more. Let me take this one. This is uh, the last one, I guess. So just one question in that assessment. Okay, so what's a car? Now, this is the objective view. When an objective question is set, you can see instantaneously, this is what the students will see. They see a CBT instantly inside the chat class, unlike what you have from other chat platforms. The web polytechnic software is able to create this from the lecturer setting it instantly. And uh, from there, I can just pick, uh, what's a car? I can say it's a vehicle and submit that particular one. And once I've done that, I can see the system has marked me, telling me I scored 10. Wow, so 10. So if it's manual, it will be left for the lecturer to mark. But when it's not manual, uh, the system marks it, as you can see, for the objective. And then, uh, yes, I can see I've done all I'm supposed to do. It's up to the lecturer to mark the other ones. So I go back uh, to the class and uh, to the lecturer. Let's go to the lecturer's view and see what the lecturer says from this particular one that we have done. All right, so we can see the lecturer, uh, let's reload that so that we have access to the new information uh, like the lecturer has. So, okay, so let's look at that. All right, all right, all right. So we've done that. So, okay, so we can view scores and comments on each and every one of these ones, as you can see. Okay. So let's go into Ayanova. She has done quite a, a bit. Okay. So let's mark the manual once she has done. And we're going to see what next on that regard. Uh, in a minute, let's look at that. Okay, so we're going hello, welcome back. So we've wiped out all the information in the chat, allowing us to start over again. This is the student's view. They are seeing their students, as I stated before. But we want to start over and actually have a good one. You can see lecturer's part is also empty. Uh, there is no classwork history. If you look into the classwork history, you can see it's empty, unlike before when we had information. But now we want to actually look at what happens at, at instance of uh, uploading. So uh, first of all, we start as a lecturer. You know, just to chat to the class, you can say, uh, hello, class. Hello, class. And that sends in. The lecturer is able to interact into the class the ascent as you can see the students also instantaneously uh, see hello class right inside the class there as the lecturer has stated it okay so okay so we are in a different course from the lecture lecturer is actually teaching uh maths 101 and we are in mts 311 all right so uh that is causing a lot of issues so let's go back uh <laughs> and then go to maths 101 so that's the lecturer and students are on the same phase okay so the student wants to attend the class uh student needs to attend okay so this student's only registered for math 311 because this student is in 300 level okay so we need to log in as a student who is in 100 level so let's log out of this student and then we need to go and log in as a student on the level so i'm going to go to the admin now and i'm going to look for a student in uh 100 level and then log in uh we look at the password of uh, such a student uh, password can be encrypted, but for the sake of this display, just left it open so that we have access. As you can see, Ayanova is in 300 levels. Uh, we need a student in 100 level. Uh, we have Daniel and Joko and Mamet. So, I mean, just change Ayanova over to 100 level, also giving us an idea to see how the software reacts to such changes. And we can see uh, 100 level information will pop up right for that particular student. So, let's log in back as Ayanova. Yes, three on the level, and then we have that. Okay, so here we are. We can go into the class to attend the class. As we've seen, we've seen a lot of the information on how the CBT looks and the structures it takes. Although we did that while we logged in at Enter 311, while we're teaching one, so that gives us an idea of that. So now that she's in 100 level, you can see 100 level courses pop up for that particular student once they are in 100 level. So let's enter. Let's attend uh, this particular class. Okay, so we can see now. So the lecturer says hello, and the student is able to see that hello instantly. And uh, so we know the rest of them, audio, video, all of them we're familiar with from WhatsApp. Uh, so, but we're going to go in and look at the question setting straight. So as a lecturer, I want to set an essay question. I can say, what is a giraffe? Now, I just want to show us, uh, because we've already seen many other things there. I just want to show us um, the look of the transition between uh, what the lecturer does and what the student does. The my guide, you can see a giraffe is an 
herbivorous animal an herbivorous animal as we can see so the score uses 10 we can submit this and have that there so we can set the second question we set one let's make it two questions for this particular classwork uh what is a cow now we can say a cow is a land animal. land animal the cow is a land animal uh, as you can see from there all right so um we'll go ahead and submit this question so that we know uh we have said two questions okay oh the score was given us zero in that one sorry so but let's just go ahead to the class we can go uh, back to the class sorry about that i went home uh, click on back to get back to the class all right so here we are you can see we have set this question as you can see for the students these three questions have been set here right into the system as you can see it's able to handle it as it should and um, uh, none of the students have done the assessment so we're going to go ahead and do the assessment as one of the students and we're able to see how the lecture view changes i don't need to show you the assessment in detail because you already have a pre-knowledge of that from our from the presentation uh, before we write it so uh, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, move in to the student's view and then we can see. So this is it. You can see that student is not seeing information for other students' classwork, just their own, giving us a testament to the privacy of the system. Okay, so we can actually take class. I see about 10, but nothing has been done. So let's, let's because I, I put zero on one of them. So a giraffe, you can just say a giraffe is an animal. All right, so full we'll stop with that, and then we submit it, and the system marks it because we selected essay. But I just want us to see how that works about that. All right, so this is let me see do it. Uh, it's taking one classwork, it's got 8.33. Uh, the second one is actually zero as maximum score, so I'm guessing uh, we just uh, get zero on that. Uh, let's just leave that out since it wasn't set well. Get back to our class down there, okay? So we can view the scores on that one. As you can see, it hasn't still done this one, but the score on this one displays through that. So let's see what the lecturer says. The student just did the assessment. We can see instantly that student has changed. Uh, sorry about that. Also, so let's 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 move the screen to the lecturer. Aha, uh -huh, you can see now. Once student has done the assessment, the rest is still showing not done. Uh, the lecturer can easily also still view uh, what the student has scored. You can see he didn't do one, so that one is not showing up for the lecturer. But the student has done this particular one, and that one shows up for the lecturer as we can see in that particular regard so that student has done that that handles the system is able to handle that as efficiently as possible and that is what happens now we want to also try one more thing now we can see some students have not done it but we want to waste our time logging as another student so we're going to stay logged in as this particular student and then we're going to be able to walk around that so i'm going to create another question and i want to test the lock classwork feature that allows the lecturer to stop a classwork uh right in its tracks Sorry, I have to share my screen appropriately for you to see that. So we we'll move to the to to that particular place. This is the student. I want to I want to share the lecturer screen with you. So let's move over to lecturer. Okay, there we are in lecturer view. Okay, so we are able to see this, and we are looking at uh, this structure right here. From what we can see. Okay, so so I'm going to set a new classwork now as a lecturer. Uh, let's set, uh, we are very soon the objective, I mean, now it goes. So I'm just going to set, um, uh, let's just set an essay classwork, uh, well, an objective, so that we'll see, or let's set a gap classwork, right? <laughs> There's too, many, too much variety to pick from, so we just pick anyone we like in there. Sorry about that, you know, it's uh, quite uh, exhilarating. Okay, so... All right, so we are done basically with the major features uh, as we have gone through uh, what we had before. We've been through, as we saw, the home dashboard, which is the population, the admin dashboard, the teacher dashboard, and the student dashboard. And now the students can take exams, how uh, they can take tests, how they can interact with one another, uh, right in that regard. And now the chat platform works, how the lecturers can set classworks, and now they can also set exams. We'll go ahead and see how an examination looks for the students in the moment. So let's move our screen to where we can actually do that. So uh, we're going into our platform now. Yes, let's go into that. 
platform as we go ahead and share. So we're back in to the platform now. Um, this is the web school platform, which is uh, uh, an interface that will be given uh, to a new structure. But uh, at the Web Polytechnic, which you're familiar with, this is where we are. Now, as a student, as a student, we are able to actually do exams. So I want us to quickly view the exam uh, doing of uh, the students. So as a student, I want to go to the home now, click an examination, and then just take it. So and take exam platform. Uh, okay, so I've, the exams have been opened. So that's why you can see this. So I just click on Math 100. Okay, so I can take any of these exams. Let's, uh, let's take a multiple choice exam. Uh -huh, so that's it. So, okay, so this exam has passed. Therefore, I can no longer take this exam. So most of the exams have passed because these exams were set a long time ago. So we would have to go into the uh, lecturer's place and then edit Lucky. an exam before the students will be able to do that particular exam. Uh, so you can see, so we're going to go in as a lecturer now and edit the exams uh, through the back end. We edit the start time and the stop time of the exam so that we can actually view students taking exam. But prior to that, we'd like to show up some interesting features that the system has and then uh, a new platform that will actually be deploying uh, um, upon uh, deployment into an institution now. This platform is currently being uh, set up in the web schools platform as we will, the, the, that will pop up in a second. So this is a platform that will be having upon deployment. Right here, I want to test some other features that have been added for the lecturers. In this place, you'll be seeing it as teacher and uh, maybe some secondary school information. The population view is there uh, for each of the levels. This is how it's going to be popping up. Uh, so in uh, the new interface, which is what you will have upon deployment, uh, you are familiar with the admin already, which we've talked about uh, prior to this. We'll still be putting in our ABCD password and the click on verify for that. Okay, so once we have done that, it pops up a button to enter the admin. So this is going to be our admin structure, as you can see. Uh, so this is the interface that would actually uh, be, be deploying for you that is fully functional, as you can see, uh, all the functions there. With some, you can see the OMR sheet for the uh, OMR exam we talked about can be gotten from this particular place. Now, some other features are now added into the software, uh, which we'll see, first of all, session and uh, uh, session and uh, semester can be set from here. And once it has been set, that's what's part of our problems. So, but I want us to look at this. Now, this is a brilliant innovation that we are quite proud of. You can see it has downloaded right here. I can actually click on view. So I'm going to just uh, uh, click on open file. Okay, so, uh, and then we're going to share screen to where the file is open. Once the file is opened at any place. Okay, so the file has been opened. So let's share our screen to our, our work, as you can see. Okay, so this is the OMR sheet. This is an electronic OMR sheet that you can mark with your mobile phone just by snapping this sheet. Once the students shade it, um, it will be given alongside uh, the questions. And once the students share and fill in their information, the lecturer just simply takes their phone and snaps this. And once it's snapped instantly, the system takes in the scores and records it. The OMR sheet, as you can see, comes on the platform. It can be downloaded and mass or photocopied to be used by the school authority uh, in, in that particular case. You can also customize it. So that the school authority has uh, their own special one, which cannot just be used or for the copy by any student uh, for security purposes in an examination. It could come with a watermark, uh, preventing students from needing to just uh, uh, mass produce that. And it can be made colored. And that would not stop the phones from being able to mark it. So the school authority can actually fashion this. We've left it open, allowing for customization by the school uh, with the badges, with whatever watermark we want to use to actually guarantee the security of this particular uh, software. So that is our OMR sheet, which is a new innovation added to the system. Let's go back to the new screen. So now, apart from that, we would love to go into the teacher's platform and then see how that particular one works. So we'll just click on home from here. And we'll get to the room. We will go into the teacher's platform and then we'll see how the teacher's platform actually works in this new uh, structure. So now let's log in as a teacher here. Uh, we'll be logging in right here. So our teacher is Ayo Gadebo. So we'll just uh, click on that. Uh, let's see if we can go straight. If we don't have the wrong, okay, so we have the wrong one. We have the wrong password. So Ayo Gadebo, our password is Math God. He is a lecturer in the system. It should be, okay, yes. So 
there we are. These are the subjects taught by the lecturers, the population of these classes. Now, if you look at the bottom here, we have the two new. Now, when the UML sheet is taken, once you click on this, you can click on active assessment. You can see view scores. Now, you can create a new SNAP assessment. By clicking on this, you will see that. You can see that you put in the score, the number of questions, so that when the system, when, when, the, when the script is being snapped, the system knows what to do and how to go about that. All right. So we can view scores in any assessment. Uh, and also we can impute. Let's take this. This is a snap assessment that was created. You can see we snap these scores into the system for each and every one of the students. Okay. So we can actually add more uh, scores into this. But because this has been filled, when you click on snap script, because these students have been taken in, you can see it's empty. It's not bringing us any new students. But if we, if we wanted to snap into another assessment where the students are, have not all done, uh, let's check this CA3. In this particular case, okay, because one student is left, so we can snap straight into this assessment. We should have one student, as you can see, bin cans pops up. If we click on choose a file, all we have to do is just choose it and uh, snap and select and upload. And once that has been uploaded into the system, the lecturer simply click submit, and that student's score is instantly entered into the database without much ado. So that's how beautiful snap scores. Snap scores can be used even to snap into already done assessments in case maybe some people did uh, the CBT version and the student just wants to do a paper version. You can easily use this OML sheet to solve that particular uh, problem. So we go back to home now and then we want to look at our lesson plan lesson or generator which can be used for generating course outlines for the polytechnics. Now all we have to do is just click on the, on the course and then we can see this one was automatically generated. You can see the notes. This is what's a satellite. And uh, the satellite is system, as you can see with me already. You can see what we have right there. Uh, so we already have that. So now you can see the system was the one that generated these notes. For the system, we can view the notes. The notes, remember, the notes can be edited. Well, to see, this is the notes as it was generated by the system. But uh, any lecturer can decide to edit uh, those notes. Um, and then you can see, just click on edit the notes and then remove, as you can see, you can expand that. And then whatever is not needed can be removed and what is needed for the teaching can be left by the lecturer. Uh, yeah, so in order to generate a, a, a lesson uh, note, we simply just click on create lesson plan. And once lesson plan is created, we can select uh, maybe with two, we already have with one. And we can say, what is a car? And we can say the second topic is gonna be is to be of cars for that particular week. All right, so uh, we submit that, and then we have this. You can see it has generated. You can see this one doesn't have the generate button because it's already generated. If you click view notes here, it should be empty. As you can see, it's empty because notes have not been generated, and that's why we have the generate button popping up right there. So once we click on the generate button, the button instantly generates uh, cost notes uh, for that particular cost plan that has been written out by the lecturer. So this is the interface and these features will all be coming together into the Web Polytechnic platform, uh, giving us a beautiful, wonderful uh, event structure, as I said. As you can see, what is a car? Uh, you can say, let, let's just look at details of that. The system has automatically generated this information. Uh, Long run night automobile magazine. He talks about the car, cars in 2016 about the animated comedy uh so uh yeah talks about all the film cars uh, just a bit to draft information so uh yeah so cars are uh, what cars are so uh, well, basically that's all about that <laughs> so you say they're talking about uh, futuristic cars electronic systems that's his driver so that gives mm -hmm. us a little idea of what a car is and then about the history of cars you can see, if we, if we want to look at the details there, the system generated this automatically. You can see in 1769, the first steam-powered automobile capable of human transportation was built by Nicholas Joseph Cognot. As you can see, this, uh, this is just beautiful. The system automatically generated this. It can be edited, as I said. You can take away what you don't want, add what you want from that. So, And this can be used directly by the lecturers to do their work. OK, so that is that are some of the new features. We have added to a uh, web polytechnic, and this is our new interface that will be used on the deployment of that. So once you reload this page, you see the generate button is gone because that note has already been generated, and the lecturer can access it at any point in time just to do their work. So these are more of the beautiful features that we have in this particular software. As you can see, uh, we'd love to hear from you. 
We love to deploy this beautiful software for your institution and uh, to allow the distance learning or online programs to be as perfect and beautiful as they ought to be. Thank you very much. Once again, my name is Ayo Badebo. Have a lovely and beautiful time.